Well, folks, we have reached the end of an era. That is right. After seven amazing seasons, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has come to an end tonight. All I can say to the cast and crew is bravo. What an amazing journey uh, these characters have gone through over the past seven seasons. I can't even begin to explain. I started actively watching the show as it aired about midway through season two, and I've been a faithful follower ever since. I just can't believe that I just watched the end, that there will be no more seasons, there were no more teases at the end, everything has been tied up, and the show has ended. Now, this will be spoiler filled. Let me start by saying I'm so glad that the cast and crew got to end this show on their own terms. Many different seasons, we were worried as to whether or not S.H.I.E.L.D. would be renewed. There were several campaigns run by the fans saying, renew Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for, you know, season three, season four, season five. Um, and then I remember when they announced that season six and seven were both coming out. We were amazed. And then they said season seven would be the final season. I was like, this is great. Because I can't imagine what, what, what it would have been like how disappointing it would have been if um, the show would have been left on a cliffhanger um, without these extra seasons of development, of great stories, character structures. I'm just so glad it got to end the way it was supposed to. Now I'm kind of going to go through the arcs and where each character ended off at the end. Now let's start with Daisy Johnson, Quake. We saw her as Sky, this computer hacker turn shield agent we see her transformation into quake as we find her true family ties her name is daisy johnson she went through a very hard family struggle with cal and jai ying and we got to see that revisited in this season seven you know what could have been i had mixed opinions on cora but i'm glad that they decided to end cora as one of the good guys it's good to see Daisy and Cora having that sisterly bond and for Cora to finally give in to that, you know. One thing that I thought was brilliant about this season during their amazing time travel episodes, which I gotta say, I absolutely loved, was seeing Agent Daniel Sousa from Agent Carter. Now, I had watched both seasons of Agent Carter, so I was thrilled to see him and the way that they fit him in. It was awesome. One thing I was not expecting was her relationship with Sousa. And God, I'm so glad that it worked so well. We really saw it come to a head in the Groundhog Day episode where she kind of took one of those time loops uh, just to kind of confess her love to Sousa. And of course, he doesn't remember that. So in this finale episode, it's finally Sousa's turn to say, hey, you know, in case you die. And I really thought they were setting up with these last few episodes. You know, it was really starting to feel like the end. Um, especially in episode 11, her and Mac were getting into some deep discussions about, you know, I don't want to be those people that see each other once a year and say, and, you know, catch up and say, how have you been? You know, she, she wasn't ready to say goodbye. Um, but she was slowly realizing, as was the entire team, that this would be their final mission together. I thought she was about to die. I was on the edge of my seat in her fight versus Nathaniel Malik. But that, I mean, that was beautiful. I thought she was dying right there, you know, taking one for the team, blowing up the base. But you see that beautiful shot of her floating in space. Thought that was going to be it right there. But the Zephyr rises up and I thought, ah, oh, yes, yes. Because also to me, that opens up the door for a possible appearance of hers in future MCU projects. I will get to that a little later, but the beautiful way that they ended this show where they all kind of came together in a hologram meet up the original five plus Mac and Yo-Yo, but then you slowly see where each of them are a year later. Daisy is with Sousa. She's happy. She has finally had a love interest that hasn't been killed off. Cheers to that. And Sousa, I, I have seen his character built up in Agent Carter. And I think that, uh, you know, I, I've watched a lot of reactions from people um, who have and haven't seen Agent Carter. And they've all loved Sousa. He's had great development in this show. 
And it's been cool to see what others who hadn't seen Agent Carter previously think of Sousa. And he really just was developed very well into this show and he meshed so well with the team. One of the greatest decisions that the writers have made. But you see them going on missions, which it looked like they were in the Zephyr um, with Korra and they go and see this nebula. And I thought that was beautiful. Now let's talk about May. Her and Coulson finally confessed their love to one another a few seasons back, but she had to say goodbye to Coulson. Coulson spent the last few days of his life with May. And May was kind of lost, you know? She never got to show those feelings for him um, because once they had finally gotten into that, it was too late for Coulson. And with the whole Sarge thing, I could see how it was difficult for May to accept this LMD Coulson. I mean, it's a robot. Even though it is as close to Coulson as you can get without actually being Coulson, May just can't accept this. But we see as she develops these empathic abilities during the series, during season seven, Although she can't feel Coulson since he's a robot, she begins to kind of warm up to him. And in the end, I can see how it was best for the both of them to go their separate ways. And now May is finally laying low. She finally catches a break. We see that she is teaching students such as Flint at the brand new Coulson Academy. I thought that was an amazing way to end her character. She's been through so much as of all these characters. Now let's talk about Yo-Yo. After she logs off of the chat, you see her zooming down the road in the back of the car with Piper and Agent Davis. So Davis is alive. Look at that. Don't know how that works, but great to see them back zooming into another mission. It's great to see that they're still active in the field. And Yo-Yo opens that car. Awesome looking car, by the way. And she just speeds out. That's amazing. I'm so glad that we saw these flashbacks with Piper and Flint and where they were um, during this jump. We got to see finally what happened in the middle at the end of season six when Simmons walks in. She doesn't know what's going on, but we finally, everything is pieced together and it was done so beautifully. But speaking of that, let's talk about Fitz Simmons. Finally, it was so satisfying to see Fitz return. This was hyped up the entire season. And that was such a great move. At first, I was kind of like, come on, we're not going to get any fits this season, you know, until the very end, seriously. But I'm so glad the writers made that decision because he was the beacon of hope. He came back and instantly we were all drawn back into it. We're like, yes, Fitz is back. Such a happy moment. It was quite heartbreaking to see Gemma not remembering him at first. But then when it finally clicked, this constellation they were talking about, that was the basis of this entire plan that they had to create. We know we it was real to us that they had spent a lot of time together. They lay low for a while before they had to split apart, go their separate ways, leaving Piper and Flint to guard. This constellation, we find out, was the name of their child. Fitzsimmons has the child, assumingly Deke's mother, and it was so good to see. That warmed my heart. We finally get Fitzsimmons living a happy life at the end, being with their child, happily married. The cosmos had finally not been against them for once. So satisfying. Their characters, their arc was really the foundation of this entire season. And it has been for the past seven seasons, honestly. It's been such an integral part. And it was so great to see that pay off with them finally being happy. Now let's talk about Mac. We see him in this trench coat looking boss and it zooms out, he's on a S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier. Not much to say about that, but the man is still in action at S.H.I.E.L.D. taking initiative. I love to see it. The adventures continue with Mac. I love that Daisy, Sousa, Cora, Mac, Yo-Yo, Agents, Piper, and Davis are all still out there on the field. And who do we have left, of course, Agent Coulson. We're thinking, what is left for this guy? He's an LMD, he's got this life to live. What is an LMD to do? What is LMD Coulson to do in this world? And this hit especially different because we have seen Coulson in action since Iron Man 2008, the very first MCU project. So now this man who has easily had the most screen time out of any Marvel character, I think, honestly, Phil Coulson, if you watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I would argue that Phil Coulson is the powerhouse of the MCU. And we see the ending. He's walking around, you see him pull out his keys, pans out to Lola. And when he's finally revving up the engine, leaving, 
hovering up, just like in season one. It had been so long since we saw Lola. But then, it transforms. Lola's got this awesome redesign with a black and red tint, and we hear that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. theme one last time. Coulson flies off into the distance. What a beautiful way to end the show. And one more thing, Deke. Now, I'm glad that Deke stepped up, took the initiative, said, I will stay back here and watch. And in 1983, you know, they were making these jokes about, oh, this man's probably playing at Madison Square Garden, you know, rock legend, 80s rock legend, the Deke squad, right? But he is left here with this, uh, by the way, we see a young Victoria Hand in this 1983 uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. bunker with all of these other agents. Deke is left to be their leader, and I love that. This is a man pulled out of the future, like 70 years into the future, the grandson of Fitzsimmons. When we see Fitzsimmons' daughter, that is confirmation, you know, Fitzsimmons and Deke have all been in such danger ever since Deke came into play, and finally, we know that the timeline is somewhat restored, and Deke will live on, but now the man from the future is leading a team in the 80s. I love it. And when everybody was saying, you know, you guys will never be in the same room together ever again. But Fitzsimmons say, you know, we might see Deke somewhere down the line. Obviously, they will inevitably meet Deke when they become grandparents. And that's so beautiful. But one thing I want to talk about, the future, okay? This was the last MCU TV show, last Marvel television show left before the MCU Disney Plus slate. This was easily the strongest MCU show. Uh, sad to see it go, but I'm happy that it went out in such a strong way. But like I said, the future, S.H.I.E.L.D. has built up in seven seasons these strong, amazing characters that have such potential. We know that we will be seeing some stuff with S.W.O.R.D. in the future of the MCU. With WandaVision, we got uh, Monica Rambeau looking to be a member of S.W.O.R.D. Um, a lot of people are saying, let's see, let's put Daisy in some sword stuff. I'd love to see Daisy in any extent in the future of the MCU. You know, she's such a powerful character. You know, we're getting rumors of a Secret Warriors TV series. Get Chloe Bennett as Quake on there. If she's not on that, I'm not interested. You've got it right there. Do it, Marvel. Take the step. And with Phil Coulson zooming off into the distance. He has potential to be in any MCU property ever. By the way, is that the Triskelion in the background? Correct me if I'm wrong. I saw somebody's comment on Twitter. Let's make him the next Stan Lee. Let's put a Phil Coulson cameo in future MCU projects. I would love to see it. Also, the Quantum Realm came into play. Huge MCU tie-in. For all you guys making an argument about S.H.I.E.L.D. not being connected to the MCU, take a look at this. But guys, this was truly the end of an era. To all you S.H.I.E.L.D. fans that have watched over the years, long live the badge, long live the S.H.I.E.L.D., the light and the darkness. Welcome to level seven. Coulson lives, S.H.I.E.L.D. lives. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below. I will see you guys later. And, oh, don't touch Lola.